Ramsey, Intrepid Eric Ramsey. You know, Intrepid is one of many words that have been used to describe me today. Testing? Testing? Well, everybody uh, here at Foxwoods, one, thank you very much for coming to this really historic event. It's never happened in the history of modern poker that we brought together the final, entire final table of the World Series. And they have reassembled today. The 2010 World Series November 9 is here, one by one. And uh, really, as you can see by all the press here, this is really a historic event in poker. Um, but I will say, I work for ESPN, but I could not give this group justice. And to have a reunion of the November 9, it is only fitting that we have the voice of poker for ESPN. Unfortunately, both commentators couldn't be here because of a prior commitment. But to announce the 2010 November 9 reunion event, we are so proud to have none other than Norman Chad's better half, ESPN's own Lon McCarran. Well, Bernard, you, uh, Bernard, thank you very much for uh, getting this thing together. He lied to you a little bit. Uh, I would not allow Norman Chad to show up here. <laughs> but congratulations to Foxwoods and Bernard Lee for putting on this uh, historic event, the reunion of the November 9, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and phone calls went into this. And uh, I tell you, it is a truly historic event. Now, these nine players, November 9, will be playing together once again first time since last November, but they will be joined by 18 lucky players, and uh, I guess they come from the Foxwoods family, and uh, they play tournaments, and they got into a drawing uh, last Friday, after months of qualifying tournaments, and congratulations to those guys. Uh, rounding out the table, though, be a few other fortunate souls, the owner, publisher of All In Magazine, I'm not sure where he is right now, Casey Thompson. Where's Casey? In the back. Casey Thompson. <laughs> and also, the spokesperson for here at Foxwoods, the man you know, Bernard Lee, will also be playing. <laughs> and after watching thousands of hands myself, I feel very qualified to make a fool of myself on the felt. So I'll be joining the players as well. And so, an easy mark for them all. I know you all want to get back to playing poker, get the other tournament underway. So without further ado, let's introduce the November 9. At the youngest ever World Series of Poker main event final table, he was the oldest member at the ripe young age of 37, playing in just his fourth live tournament at the 2010 World Series of Poker main event. This amateur outlasted some of the best players in the world to make the November 9. He gave hope to all of us other amateurs, finishing in ninth place from Santa Ana, California, Soy Win. With his father, Norm, suffering from cancer during the 2010 World Series of Poker Main Event, this young Canadian not only had to battle emotions at the table, but off the felt as well. Fortunately, with his father's cancer now in remission and back on the golf course, this gentleman can now focus his passion on poker. A very smart, thoughtful player in eighth place from Surrey, British Columbia, Matthew Jarvis. Entering the final table as the short stack, this guy set an aggressive tone, immediately pushing all in on the second hand of the final table, four times in the first 14 hands. He had the respect of the cash games worldwide. Now he has shown he's a very smart tournament player as well, finishing in seventh place, the pride of St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Welcome Jason Sentai. This online superstar, no stranger to you folks here at Foxwoods, not only did he make the November 9th, but to warm up for the World Series main event, final table, he finished second here at Foxwoods last fall in the $1,500 event just a couple of weeks before returning to Vegas to play in the November 9th. He added $20 million in chips as play was 10-handed at the main event, the sixth place finisher from Bonita Springs, Florida, John Dolan.
He kicked off the 2010 World Series of Poker with a huge bang, winning his first bracelet and the 50K Poker Players Championship. He final tabled three more events, including, of course, the main event. All his brothers cashed in the main event. His wife recently came through with a six-figure score, and I read in All In Magazine, his son took 20 bucks off the school nurse in Chinese poker. It's the grinder, Michael Mizrahi. European players have had a huge impact on the World Series and poker in general, but he was the only European 2010 World Series November 9. He brought charisma and flair of his own to the final table, which included his signature sweater, which is now proudly framed at his home in Italy. His passionate outburst made his name a household name for a lot of poker players. Fourth place finisher, Filippo Candio. This player had an impressive 2010, as they all did, sandwiching, making the November 9 with two tour victories, a World Series of Poker circuit ring, and a WPT preliminary event. Known for his calm, cool demeanor, this player will be a force to be reckoned with for many years to come. And you know he's not afraid to put his chips at work. Third place finisher from La Mirada, California, Joseph Chong. The veteran here of the poker circuit followed up his World Series runner-up finish with a fourth place finish at the WPT Five Diamond main event. Overall, he finished fifth in the 2010 Player of the Year race. He played it well to get heads up at the main event. Give it up for second place finisher from Port Ritchie, Florida, John Reisner. And finally, the player who broke the chip leader curse at the main event. The player who became the first Canadian World Series of Poker main event champion. And the player who won $8.9 million on November 9, your 2010 World Series of Poker main event world champion from Montreal, Canada, Jonathan Duhamel. I hope everyone has a good time. Feel free to talk to the players. They are very welcoming. Congratulations to everyone who made the event. Bernard Lee will now kick off this historic November 9 reunion event. Lon, thank you so much. Obviously, as I mentioned before, this event would not be the same without Lon McCarran.